so now that the sky is dried while I was working down here on this section I'm going to go up and I'm going to start doing a little bit of work on the hills and bringing in some of the creams on the building you can see that ultimately we're going to be really careful you've got two different types of cream you're looking at one for where the light is hitting it so it's going to be a very soft light cream and then one for one well one for being in shadow which is a um, kind of grey murkier cream so first of all though before we get into the creams let's do the green you can see the green is a little bit out into the distance so it has to be quite faint again that adds to your aerial perspective illusion and technique if you take a smaller brush and I'm going to mix up a little bit of green so I'm going to use a, a little bit of ultramarine blue and some cadmium yellow I'm going to add a little bit of Payne's grey because I want it murky Let's get that distance illusion you can also see, I don't know if it's me or my reference image, but it looks stronger down here and then it gets a little bit more faint and worn out. So I'm going to grab a little bit of water and if I add the water in around here, I've got a little bit of green on my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of green and that means that I'll be able to make it darker by increasing the pigment within the mix. Do you think about the type of line you get, don't have too smooth, it's going to be trees over in the distance. You need to add a bumpiness. Now while I've got this green, I'm going to fill it in a few places over here as well because I thought it might be kind of handy using that. It's a little bit darker, so if I add in a little bit more of that Payne's Grey and start painting those bushes in. Amazing how it starts to be red, doesn't it, as a building, just by adding in a few bit of little bits like that, really. Now, again, keep cleaning your water. I'm constantly cleaning my water. That's why it gets easier if you've got two pots. But, you know, as long as you're using something that isn't giving you cross-contamination, you'll be okay. Also, keep an eye on your palette and make sure that you clean your palette if you are running out of room to mix up colours, which I'm getting to that point of. I'm now going to start mixing up some of that light cream. For that, I'm going to use my yellow ochre. I'm going to dilute it down. You know, it's usually wise to have a bit of paper that you can just test it out on. So I've got this top bit over here that I'm not going to be using. I'm putting a few splodges on there. It's a little bit too yellowy for my liking. So if I just take a little bit of, probably go for a cadmium red. And that would make it, yeah, okay. Be careful if you add too much, it'll look like skin colour. I'm going to take that and I'm going to paint that into my areas of light. Now it's a little bit orangey up there, so I'm going to just grab my tissue. That off. That take off the excess pigment and make it a little bit softer. And when I've got that lighter tone, I can put it on some of the buildings I can see. Okay, now I'm going to also use like that in the areas that are light down here on this brickwork so if I bring in a little bit down here and now my roof is dried out I can bring that in going around I'm going to add a little bit of water into it so it lightens it up if I add the water and then I use a tissue to blot you can see you get a much lighter tone so if I go over these just take off the excess pigment soften them down, wash out the colour and make it look more like that softer. Um, it reminds me of that gentle stone, um, sandstone, that's it, that's what I'm trying to think of. So your grey cells are starting to kick in. diluted and gentle in tone. Okay. 
Now you've got a little bit of light hitting up here, so I'm going to take a little bit of that and just put it on the ray. So I'm going to put a darker shade on top of it once that dries over. Now the next shade obviously is all the orange, and we've already got this orange mixed up over here that we use for these roofs. So it's nice because it's tying this roof into this roof. But how orange is it? Is it orange enough is the question. I think it needs to be a little bit more orange. I'm going to increase the amount of orange in that pigment. Mix. That looks better to me. And a little bit more of a purer cadmium orange. And then I'm going to stick that in on a few places where I can see these lovely orange roofs. So everything's quite gentle and light, and that's what you should be aiming for. With watercolours, it's like oil. They're about being very slow and gentle, and gradually working up towards the darker tones. Now, uh, while those roofs are drying, let's come back here and work up these roofs. So these roofs are still a little bit damp, because you can see the paper is wafering. Um, but generally it's enough that I can put down more colour on top of it and I want to bleed some browns in and have like a real night like, dance and mixture of different shades but oh, before I do that I need to clean my water and my palette so I'll see you in a moment okay so let's start building up some of the shadow areas I'm going to get a little bit of raw umber and add in a little bit of ultramarine blue Splodge up here just to see. Now you can see this is actually quite dark. I'll probably work well for the roof section and some of the roof areas down here, but it's a little bit too harsh for the shadow here. If I take some of the water and dilute the shade a little bit more, that looks much better. I'm going to start filling that in a little bit. Take a little bit of yellow ochre, dilute that down, just get a little bit of light hitting this right hand side. Let's just take that off a little bit so it's soft, just like so. Remember that was the raw rumba with a little bit of ultramarine blue. How dark, that's very dark, which is what I was saying. And then I'm going to bring that in for a little bit of the shadow work on the roof, which I'm going to go much darker. I'm just going to build up a little bit so I've got a few tones going in there. So to make that a little bit darker, let's increase the blue. Dab in a little bit of that blue mix. Now you could also do that if you want to on the windows. Be careful because you can see how I got that bleed. It means it was too soon to do it. It's all too wet. I'll come back and do that. But while I have got a dark, it's actually dry on this side. You can put it in here. Again, so we're taking that shade a lighter tone, double checking over there on our piece of paper, and I can put that in as the shadow on some of the houses up here on the hill. If I increase the blue so it gets a little bit stronger and darker, because remember it's that mix between ultramarine blue and the raw umber, I could bring a little bit more of a stronger shade into certain sections of these houses to build contrast and atmosphere. Now 
Now for these rolls down here, I'm going to use a mix of using um, the yellow ochre and then bleeding in this mix of raw umber and ultramarine. So first of all, let's just have a look at that. That needs a little bit more pigment in it. So. soft gentle washed out area and then let's start working some of these roofs. So if I put in a little bit of my yellow ochre and if I mix in that brown because it's a speckly pattern that we've got on these roofs. So you put watercolour surface it will bleed and give you that speckly pattern. Then if I up the ultramarine blue bring in a few darker blobs. I'm trying not to cover everything because I want some of that first colour that I've laid down to shine through. Just like so. So, stay over here and do this one. And I've got this wet bit here, so I'm going to go up, but I'm not going to go into that wet bit, or I'm going to end up creating a flow across contamination between the two sections of the painting. fun with it. Don't worry too much. Pencils and pencil. My brush is alive then. Just jumping all over the place. Go for the darker version of that mix by increasing the blue. I'm getting pretty good at this because it's basically the repeating of the process. Now if you wanted to, you could make him a little bit more orangey. See a lot of this is the orange in the background rather than the orange in those roots. But if you're feeling like you want to go a bit more orangey, um, grab a, or make a little bit of orange. And just dab that in as well. really interesting mix on the surface of the paper. I do try and keep it consistent because remember all these roofs do look very similar so if you do one to one roof try and do it to all of them. Treat them as a collective. I've got to do these ones but remember that this section's wet that section's wet, so when I do this, I need to go up and give it a little bit of dry paper barrier just between the two.
Okay, now I'm gonna dilute that because you can see that the grey on the top of this chimney. Just use that for putting in some grey tones. I need to build up a little bit of a darker grey wash over here but before I can do that I need to let these all dry off or they're going to bleed into it so I've got a darker tone I'm just going to top up some of the roofs in the background to increase the perspective and the look of perspective okay, so I'm going to just boost a bit of orange because it's going to go up against a strong linear pen detail so it's going to change quite radically once you get the lines and the detail in right okay so that looks pretty good um, build up a little bit on the windows once that's dry I'll put in the darker shadows on the windows and run a few darks along the top. Actually, I could do that now, can I? Let's just get that in there, shall we? And I'm doing it white to wet, so it's got a little bit of a bleed to make it interesting. I'm going to leave that there, let that dry, and then we're going to come back and do some of the pen work, which should be really fun, uh, and just give it that life that you're looking for, this type of scene. Okay, so my watercolour layer has dried out. I've got some lovely bleeds. And this is for this background kind of layer, because remember we're going to be coming in and fine tuning the detail with pen. Um, having some fun bleeds and a mix of colour, it's going to give it character and atmosphere. So that's come out really well. Now what I've got here are two pens. I've got, they're both fine liners. You could do this in a dip pen or a cartridge pen or a fine liner. It's completely up to you. Um, I've got a 0 0.3, so that's a little tiny nib pen. And I've got a bigger one. I've actually got a whole load of these, but I thought I'll go big and small, little and large. That's a 0 0.8. Now I'm going to go in, first of all, with my finer pen and start doing some detail. I'm going to start on this because this is a rather lovely building. And it's kind of just drawing in like you would if you had a pencil, ultimately. Um, now with this it's not so bad because you should hopefully see a few of your pencil lines that you left due to doing the drawing stage. Uh, do take your time because the thing with these pens is there's no rubbing out. Once the line is down, the line is down and you're committed to it. So it's better to be happy with that line than to hate it after you've done a load of um, beautiful watercolour drawing. So I am going to be bringing in a few marks that are interesting. I could make a little bit more black where I wanted to. I can cross hatch so I can go one way and then I can go the other way over it. Um, and I can play around with it. It's always wise when you're getting into this type of work that you just kind of go somewhere that's darkish, that way if you do anything wrong you can just colour it in with the pen and cover up any of your errors. Okay, I can see that bit in there, that comes up here. And I got like an area where oh, you can see a lot of this is kind of just going over your pencil lines, forming some structure and some detail back into the artwork because it's a little bit blurred and abstracted now. And you can fill in your 
windows if you want to and make them a little bit more prominent or you can leave bits of the watercolour poking through. It's all about you playing and finding what works and the kind of finish that you want to build up in your artwork. Just like that. And now it's just going over everything. So you can see here, as I'm getting closer, well, as I'm getting onto subjects which are getting close to the fever, there I have upped my pen size because it just means I'll get through it much quicker. The finer the pen, the longer it's going to take you to do anything. Just keep that in mind. Now also remember that these far away ones need to be in a thin pen or a fine mark and they need to be very loose without much detail. When you're looking at things far away you cannot see the detail. The detail are in items that are up close. Hopefully you should end up with something like this and this project is all about mark making so you can see all the different types of marks I was generating for the roof tiles and especially the foreground area and then the idea of pushing things back into the distance by giving it less detail um, and, and letting the lines become much more freer and looser in nature when you're drawing. I hope you've enjoyed it and that you've learnt loads. Keep practicing, that's the key with this, especially with pen drawing. It can be one of those you just gotta get used to drawing in the pen and trust in your instincts. You're gonna love it in the end. See you next week. Bye everyone. Hopefully you should end up with something like this. And this project is all about mark making. So you can see all the different types of marks I was generating for the roof tiles and especially the foreground area. And then the idea of pushing things back into the distance by giving it less detail. Um, and, and letting the lines become much more freer and looser in nature when you're drawing. I hope you've enjoyed it and that you've learnt loads.